What up y'all, Rap Critic here, and this was a priority queued indie request. And if you'd like to request songs, movies, or albums and get them priority queued, head on over to ko-fi.com slash rapcritic, as well as patreon.com slash rapcritic if you want to see those episodes early, as well as join the Patreon Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. So let's talk about today's self-requested review from an artist named Hero. And just looking at the title, fake it till you make it, you can tell what type of track it's gonna be. A takedown of all those perpetrating rappers in the modern digital age who put on a fake image and puff up their numbers to look bigger than they really are. Why am one of your favorites? But you swear I'm rich and famous. Fake it till you make it. Uh. Now, I'm aware, this is total bait for a guy named The Rap Critic to review, right? Of course I'm supposed to fall over myself to compliment this type of song, yeah? But I hope he and any future requesters are well aware I am not automatically in the tank for a song just because it's about a topic I'm partial to, because, you know, it's still gotta be done well. In fact, I can only hope these artists are paying me first and foremost for my blunt honesty when dissecting a piece of music, because, I mean, that is what y'all are about to get. And for today's song, while I don't think it hits quite as hard as a lyrical satire, it still comes together as a solid enough track, starting with the instrumentals, which has this cool little ragtime throwback horn sample to set the tone while he lays out the scene for the hook. I ain't got a ride. Stop. I ain't got a job. This money came from my mama. Now, there are plenty of songs that have done the ain't really as rich as I say I am flip, most notably my personal favorite guilty pleasure, Stay Fly by the Big Timers. But as much as I like that track for the hook, it does kind of drop the concept as the verses go on. Prada, Gucci, full -length leather, leather. Like, they, they don't really explore the ironies of trying to floss when you really ain't got it like that. It's mostly straightforward brag raps that you're supposed to believe. Now, with today's song, as much as I enjoyed it, it also kind of flounders at really sticking to the topic. Like, uh, don't get it confused, though. He definitely holds his own as a lyricist. Chilling in my arena. Camouflage shit can't see me like John Cena. And I like that you can hear him going for interesting rhyme schemes. I'm just living la vida at the bar or a party. That's where we spotted like Cheetah. Money tree I ain't got, but you wrote at least that I'm cheap. Puff. But as I'm listening to what he's actually saying, it kind of takes him a while to really get into the meat of the point of the track. What's this shit, bro? This better not be the cheap stuff. Muppets sit from that teacup. Like with this line, we're about eight bars in now, and I guess he's still playing it straight as the role of the fake rapper, but there hasn't really been any subversive lines that undercut that fake rapper swagger. In fact, I'm actually kind of thrown off by the Kermit sipping tea meme here, because it actually doesn't seem like quite the right application of that meme. Because the meme is usually used when you're trying to be catty about someone else's drama, you know? Like, oh, you know, I could flame your ass for how you fucked up, but nah, I'ma leave it alone. What's this shit, bro? This better not be the cheap stuff. Muppets sit from that teacup. But here the scenario's like, huh, this better not be that cheap smoke. But, like, it's it's what you're about to smoke, so... So, like, what, you can't be smug about that. You, you're the one smoking that shit. With a squad full of geeks from the geek squad, now I'm geeked up. And, I mean, wordplay-wise, that, that, that wasn't really that clever of a flip. And yeah, that's the problem you face when making a song like this. Because it's like, oh, you think other rappers suck? Okay, well, how good are you at holding it down from lyric to lyric, you know? And the thing is, I do like the inventive rhyme schemes he throws in. Three-time champion going for four, Peter. And I ain't one shit, but won't let you ignore me, bruh. But we're already at the end of the verse now, and he still hasn't, like, really torn into fake rappers in any real concrete way. It's not until the second verse that he really gets cooking. Look at the clout that the power brings. First song ain't even come out and I'm counting streams. One million, two million, living out my dreams, but nobody at my shows. Why these people so mean? Like, ooh, okay, that's a pretty strong couplet there. Ripping on how rappers pay for streams to pump up their profile, or about how even if they do pop off on TikTok with millions of views, that doesn't necessarily translate to a loyal fan base who's gonna care about you outside of the popular internet clip. Paying for followers is the motto, it seems. Trying to get your attention from TikTok to these memes. And breaking the digital fourth wall with observing how most of the videos being made are probably a bunch of flop sweating wannabes trying to jump to whatever next thing is going to get views on their page to the detriment of being an authentic artist. Instead of letting me be me, now I'm ashamed to be. So now I give the people what they came to see, free to do whatever I want, but still it's slavery. The problem is, it's not until like the third verse where he gets into most of these more cutting rhymes, so the momentum of the commentary doesn't really kick in until the song's virtually almost over. So overall, I give this a three out of five. It's not bad, it just kind of waffles around before really sticking to his point. And while I do want to give him props for his music not strictly falling into the old rapper yelling at SoundCloud territory, honestly, the way the track rolled out didn't do enough to really make it stand out among other tracks that have done the same, but with more intentionality 
personality throughout the verses. So yeah, he's definitely able to flip a fun cadence and some nice multis, but it's not a searing takedown from start to finish like you might have expected. Regardless though, the guy's got heart and can really put a solid verse together when he's focused. Like listening through his catalog to prepare for the review, I gotta say his stuff is pretty enjoyable. Dude's a consistent lyricist and actually has some fun creative beat work that made his project stand out from just being another dusty pining for the old school production, you know what I mean? In fact, he had one track called Boom Bap Bop that had some unexpectedly cool sample work in it. So while this fake team make it track might not be my favorite, the guy's clearly talented with the pen, so I hope he keeps doing his thing. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell because that's what helps the most. And if you want to support the show, of course, that's ko-fi.com slash rabcritic for one-time donations and patreon.com slash rabcritic for ongoing donations where you can see episodes early and join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. So until next time, I'm the Rap Critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but I don't have to like your song. Even if it is a song about the type of songs that I typically wouldn't like, you know, I just still got to be done, presented well, you know what I mean? I, you get the idea. All right, I guess you later. Peace.